Sanjayo Sanye Juda Zoga Junam La Janju Bhadu Dane Yazush Dage Jin Zoga Besonam Ge Drola Benyar Sanye Dubaraisho I go for refuge and tell them enlightened to the Buddha, the Dharma, the Sangha. By my accumulations or practice of giving and so forth, may I become a Buddha to benefit all sentient beings. I go for refuge and tell them enlightened to the Buddha, the Dharma, the Sangha. By the accumulations or practice of giving and so forth, may I become a Buddha to benefit all sentient beings. I go for refuge and tell them enlightened to the Buddha, the Dharma, the Sangha. By the accumulations or practice of giving and so forth, may I become a Buddha to benefit all sentient beings. I go for refuge and tell them enlightened to the Buddha, the Dharma, the Sangha. By the accumulations or practice of giving and so forth, may I become a Buddha to benefit all sentient beings. I will recite the. Heart Sutra, page 29, English. <clears throat> I prostrate to the Arya Triple Gem. Thus did I hear at one time the Buddha was dwelling on the mass of vultures, mountain in Rajgriha, together with a great community of monks and a great community of bodhisattvas. At that time, the Buddha was absorbed in the concentration on the categories of phenomena called to profound illumination. Also at that time, the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, Aravilogitishvara looked upon the very practice of the profound illumination of wisdom and beheld those five aggregates also as empty of inherent nature. Then through the power of the Buddha, the Venerable Shariputra said this to the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, Aravilogitishvara, how should any child of the lineage who wishes to practice the activity of the profound professional wisdom train? He said that, and the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Ara Ulvutishvara said this to the Venerable Shariputra, Putra. Shari Putra, any son of the lineage or daughter of the lineage who wishes to practice the activity of the profound professional wisdom should look upon it like this, correctly and repeatedly be holding those five gates as also in their nature. Form is empty, emptiness is form. Emptiness is not other than form, form is also not other than emptiness. In the same way, feeling, discrimination, composite factors, and consciousness empty. Shariputra, likewise, all phenomena are empty, without characteristic, unreduced, unseen, stainless, not without stain, not division, not fulfilled. Shariputra, therefore, in emptiness there is no form, no feeling, no discrimination, no composite factors, no consciousness, no eye, no ear, no nose, no tongue, no body, no mind, no mental form, no sound, no smell, no taste, no object of touch, and no phenomenon. There is no eye element and so on, up to and including no mind element and no mental consciousness element. There is no ignorance and no extinction of ignorance and so on, up to and including no aging and death and no extinction of aging and death. Similarly, there is no suffering, origination, cessation and path. There is no exalted wisdom, no attainment and also no known attainment. Shari Buddha, therefore, because there is no attainment, Bodhisattvas rely on and dwell in the professional wisdom, the mind without obscuration and thus without fear. Having completely passed beyond error, they reach the end point of nirvana. All the Buddhas who dwell in the three times also manifest a completely awakened, transurpassable, perfect, complete enlightenment in reliance on the professional wisdom. Therefore, the mantra of the professional wisdom, the mantra of the great knowledge, the unsurpassed mantra, mantra equal to the unequal, the mantra that thoroughly pacifies all suffering, should be known as truth since it is not false. The mantra of the professional wisdom is declared. Deyata Om Gade Gade Bara Gade Bara Sam Gade Bodhi Swaha. Shariputra, the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva should train in the profound professional wisdom like that. Then the Buddha arose from that concentration and commanded the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, Aravilugitishvara, saying, Well said, well said, son of the lineage, it is like that, it is like that. One should practice a profound professional wisdom just as you've indicated, even the Tathagatas rejoice. The Buddha having thus spoken, Venerable Sharitvati Putra, the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, Aravilugitishvara, those around in the entire day, along with the world of gods, humans, Asuras, and Gandharvas, were overjoyed and uh, highly praised as spoken by the Buddha. Okay, let us imagine that we are there in Rajkir, um, the with the Buddha Shakyamuni, Aravilukteshvara, 
then the Vesher Putra, then His Holiness there, from whom they, uh, they received this teaching, and all the lineage masters, the great saint Saraha. Then the, the, the master Tilupa, master Narupa, Chizumarpa, Chizumela, Thakbalaji, and all the great teachers, <coughs> and Benjelo Sancho again. Um, and your two parents, your children, and all the merchants and mix up with you. And uh, the whole purpose is to activate this Mahamudra within you for the benefit of all the merchants and beings. Deo to om gade gade Pada gade Pada sangate bodhiswatyata Om gade gade Paragate Parasamgate Bodhiswatyata Om Gate Gate Paragate Parasamgate Bodhiswatyata Om Gate Gate Paragate Parasamgate Bodhiswatyata Om Gate Gate Paragate Parasamgate Bodhiswaha By the teachings of the three supreme jewels possessing power of truth, may any and outer hindrance be transformed, may they be dispelled, may they be non existent, may they be pacified. May all negative forces opposed to the Dharma be completely pacified. May the host of 80,000 obstacles be pacified. May we be separated from problems and conditions harmful to the Dharma. May all enjoyments be in accord with the Dharma. May all species of perfect happiness be, play, be with this place now. Um, okay, seven in Puja. A commission married. Purified negativity is, is so important. On page 37, English. I bow down to the youthful Aryam and Jushri. You, the Buddhas, the lions amongst humans, go to freedom in the present, past, and future. In the worlds of ten directions, to all of you with body, speech, and sincere mind, I bow down. With the energy or aspiration for the Bodhisattva way, with a sense of deep respect, and with as many bodies as atoms to the world, to all you Buddhas visualize this real, I bow down. On every particle are Buddhas numberless as atoms. Each of them is a host of Bodhisattvas, and I am confident the sphere of all phenomena is entirely filled with the Buddhas in this way. With infinite oceans of praise, and you for you and oceans of sound from the aspect of my voice. I sing the breathtaking excellence of Buddhas and celebrate all of you Sagadas. Beautiful flowers, regal garlands, music, sweet music, scented walls and parasols, sparkling lights and sublime incense are offered to you tourists once the Buddhas. Fine dress and fragrant perfumes, sandalwood powder heap high as Mount Meru. All wonders offerings and spectacular array offered to you victorious ones. With transcendent offerings, peerless and vast, with a profound admiration for all the Buddhas, with the strength of conviction in the Bodhisattva way, offer and bow down to all victorious ones. Every harmful action I've done with my body, speech, and mind, overwhelmed by attachment, anger, and confusion, all this I openly lay bare before you. I lift my heart and rejoice in all the merits of the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas in the ten directions of solitary realizers here are still training and those beyond and of all ordinary beings. You who are the bright lights of the world in ten directions, who have attained the Buddha's omniscience through the stages of awakening. All you who are my guides, please turn the supreme wheel of Dharma. With palms together earnestly, I request 
you who make Shwala's Pari Nirvana, please stay with us for aeons, numberless as atoms of the world, for the happiness and well-being of all wondrous in samsara. Whatever slight merit may have accumulated by making frustrations, offering, confessing, rejoicing and requesting that the Buddha stay and teach, and now dedicate all this for the full awakening of all beings. Okay, much offering to all Buddha's Bodhisattvas, particularly the all the Buddhist Bodhisattvas, Buddhist Bodhisattvas in the line of this lineage. <clears throat> Just ground anointed with perfumes, twin with flowers, atoned with Mount Meru, the four continents, the sun and the moon. I imagine this as a Buddha filled and offer it. May all sentient beings enjoy this pure land. Four dharmas of Venerable Kambupa. May I be blessed that my mind is directed towards the Dharma. May I be blessed that my mind Dharma practices on the proper path. May I be blessed that the path is free of flaws. May I be blessed that the flaws are seen in the light of exalted wisdom. The four dharmas of Venerable Bhikshu Mahasattva. Becoming utterly frustrated with the ignorance that grasps the true existence, please bless me with genuine, genuine renunciation, seeing all aspects of samsara as viciously repulsive. Please bless me that my mind stream overflows with the precious Buddha that their cherishes others more than myself. Please bless me to have an immaculate experience of the wisdom of emptiness that doesn't see even an atom of intrinsic reality on the basis of understanding how things come into being by dependent origination through mere conditioning. Please bless me that my mind stream overflows with the precious the wisdom of the non duality to bliss and emptiness. Edam Guru Rana Medalavam Nirate Ame. Okay. Um, first, we will um, do the read from the true text. Okay. Okay, um, all of us, you have the root text. Raise your hands, those who do not have the root text. Oh, one there, Virginie and Mary. Okay, let us make it a point that everyone has a copy of their own. Okay, now, Virginie, Virginie, you have all. Anyone who has not a copy of one's own. Okay. Um, and uh, as a, so usually um, there is a tradition and uh, the say like a belief that on the text we don't scribble things, but uh, the reality is that that say for example say where um, you need some notes to write notes that you write on your the the text and in notebook. It's up to the individual. It's up to the. It's up to you. 
and um, you do it with great respect there's no harm some people they just cook up stories or oh, if you do like this um, in fact what you wrote if that's very standard that also become a text that also become a part of the scripture what you write there I like the notes same deep so whatever um, is explained okay by the way there are um, the okay yes English wise um, the I would say you can use the uh, lemon yishes the one uh, I would say that the yes there are the several translations uh, but the I'm using this and I've been cross-checking with the Tibetan and where and there are some modifications required I'll be happy to uh, to identify where the not really say the but the mistaken error no it's a little bit of modification here and there to make it um, the say to flow more from my point of view with with the Tibetan and um, okay so I don't want to go too much into this part uh, the point is that uh, the uh, yes the translation that I'm using at uh, the Lama Ishi's archive uh, this is uh, very good and there are some points here everywhere I translate and somebody else will see it will see some mistakes here and there yeah so everyone uh, the there's something for the translators there's bound to be some the things happening here and there the I worked on this for like the last 14 years still I, I myself see many things there not really mistakes modifications improvement okay so it doesn't mean that the translation is not good it's very good this one okay with this mind <coughs> um, the so we're learning this and um, it is like for example say let's say then not only you myself also I received this teaching from His Holiness many years ago and for all of us this could be like uh, the um, let's say like the parents they leave the legacy for you they leave they leave uh, let's say your the huge amount let's say you are a very young child for your PhD program or for later for your house buying house and so forth no you don't do it now but this is very important keep them value them with respect and this is how we have to follow and uh, that later on the more respect we accord those teachings and so it doesn't mean that when I do this uh, teaching we recited the extra prayers for other teachings we don't do that it doesn't mean that other teachings are less important this is more important because this teaching is very tricky whereas other teachings they are safe for example like Bodhisattva is extremely safe I say even if you practice it uh, there's no danger that it will fall into you know wrong direction there's no danger but the wisdom and things, yes if the teacher is not skilled it can easily go into wrong direction with my emptiness. and this one can really go bad this one can really say for example if you don't show respect to this tremendous respect to this then it is like you know the say the where say the really going to this to see the wonder of this the mind versus just going into a state of coma this will become like a same it's very dangerous so therefore we need a great 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 blessings blessings the dependency our from our side the feeling of dependency on the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas to bless us as we read from Venerable Gambhubas for teachings may my mind be directed towards the Dharma may my Dharma is on the proper path May the path be freed of flaws. So the first three, the fourth one is a very realized level, highly realized level. The first three, this is so important for us. So because of which, 
the end, as I said earlier, that when this request is made, I just thought, okay, first I asked the Venerable Elizabeth, uh, Elizabeth asked me what topic. Then I say, you decide. And this came. And I was a little taken aback. Okay. And um, the, okay, then the later on, the, although what I'm doing here is on the basis of the text, but we did once for another group, uh, not on the basis of text, and that also I gave the, the warning, not uh, because that I see many of these teachings happening everywhere. And some people teach very easily. And they expect the students to do that. And I met some of the students. And they, what they're doing is just, just getting lost. And this is the where I, the, I personally saw this danger. And therefore, I decided to, uh, to take the initiative to teach also, to, to teach on this. But to give the warning, tell the people that it's so precious, don't play with this. This is not something to be to to play with. This is extremely precious and requires a great deal of the sophistication of your mind that you have to first of all the have some exposure to Buddhist psychology, empirical psychology. And then <laughs> what we study is Buddhist psychology in the Manasu universities. That's a very basic lesson. This is not what I'm talking about. This is very basic. On top of that, uh, there's one which Tibetans, we compiled it, which compiled Buddhist psychology. And that is more in line with what is the basic psychology that is, that is taught in monastery universities. Then on top of that, after studying Acharya Chandrakrit, this text, after studying the, the um, Bodhisattva Chandrakrit's Guided Bodhisattva of Life, then uh, the the um, Acharya Vasubandhu's Abhidhamma Kosh, then Acharya Dharmakirti's Pramana Vartika. Studying all these things, from there you can see many nuanced the, uh, the aspects of the psychology, empirical psychology. And these, uh, from there, I try my best to pick up the important points and put them in the form of bullet points in that the compilation. On top of the basic psychology, usually in the Manasu universities, if you ask the, even the young boys, the young monks, young girls, like the f second year, not the first year, first year they study more Duda, second year they study, second, third they study the Lorik, Lorik meaning the psychology. <coughs> so they say, yes, we study psychology, and that is a very basic psychology. Whereas for this, you require extremely nuanced psychology. And for that matter, first of all, your mind, your mind should be very de de nuanced. To see just by looking at your own mind, you can see the nuanced aspect of your mind. That's number one. Then number two, that there's every danger that you, we can slip into this. For example, let's say when you do this meditation with the uh, physically tired, mentally tired, you do this meditation, most likely you will slip into uh, laxity. <coughs> laxity, and not only laxity, like the, the state of coma, which is explained here, a state of coma there, where the mind does not hold on to anything, like a very loose hand. For example, I say uh, somebody who is sick, if you ask him to hold your hand, he or she will hold like this, and then you pull it, it just falls. But as a very healthy person, you let the person hold your hand, hold, hold like this, and then it's so difficult to get out. So that our minds are extremely fresh and alert, and uh, so there you should not really go into this lax state of the, the coma. We call it comatose. You know, that state. The so to make this distinction, this is all experiential. There is no way Bible is saying, "Oh, your your calculation is wrong. Two plus three is not six. Two plus three equals five. You can show this, but in the experience, nobody can show this to you. Teachers can guide you. Teachers can, can teachers can talk to you, and then from the, if the teacher is very experienced, then the teacher can the see uh, what's happening with you. And that too, if you get time to be with your teacher for a long time, and the teacher himself or herself is very experienced, only then 
can see what's wrong with you. Otherwise, it's nobody can help you. It's not like 2 plus 3 equals 5. So therefore, you require a lot of blessings from Buddhist Bodhisattvas. And for this, it's not that, you know, you just sit idly, oh, Buddha, give me blessings. This is not how it works. That you should be ready. That you should be there with so much obedience, respect for the Dharma and so forth. Okay, this is how it works. <clears throat> uh, as I said earlier, uh, otherwise, for any teaching, Bodhicitta, Four Seals, Look at the biography of the Buddha, Buddha Shakyamuni. Buddha Shakyamuni, many lifetimes ago, many lifetimes, today nowadays we everything is so easily accessible. I say if they're teaching Four Noble Truths, almost nobody will come. I know this already. But if you look at the Buddha's biography, many lifetimes ago, see how the Buddha, the in his previous lifetimes, incarnations, there he accorded so much respect and value, reverence to the teaching. What happened was that once the, he was so keen to, you know, to learn the Dharma. And Indra, Indra, the king of the garden goddesses of one of the one of the realms, Indra. So what he did was that the, the, he um, actually, Indra is a very strange figure. Indra, oftentimes, you know, he tests people. He tests people. And uh, seeing that um, this man, who was, actually, who was later to become Buddha Shakyamuni, many lives ago, this man was so keen on, extremely keen on Dharma, wanting to give up everything, you know, including his body, including his whole life for the Dharma. So he, he wanted to test the willpower of this person. And then he ended up disguised in the form of a teacher, of a saint, and came there. And, and this the, the person was extremely pleased to see to meet with the teacher, he made prostrations, and he requested for a teaching. And this in the, the guise of this saint, said that, I can give you teaching, but you should be ready. This teaching is so precious. You should be ready to give up everything. And the person who, uh, later, who was later to become the Buddha said, yes, I'm ready. And the Indra said, so what is required is that your skin, rip this off. It should be the paper. Your bone, should be the pen and the blood should be the ink. Only the life give the teaching. Then the, the person who was to later become the Buddha was ready. Instantly somehow with the shrub. He just, you know, the same the chopped his the one of the arms and then the, the skin took out and with the, the bone ready to write. And Indra was very slow. And the person said, please give the teaching right away, I'm, otherwise I'm going to die very soon. I cannot sustain this injury. I will die very soon. Then the Indra taught just four lines on impermanence. That's it. Just four lines on impermanence. And that, the person who was later to become the Buddha, he was with great reverence, scribbling what was taught by the, taught by Indra. So this amount of respect accorded, and this is what made him Buddha today. So therefore, uh, it is so important for us uh, to accord respect to the Dharma, to the Buddhas, Bodhisattvas. This is so important, and um, so that this teaching, not because that this teaching is more important than other teachings, so therefore we are doing something special. No. It's only because that this teaching is extremely tricky that if you can get through, it is like a breakthrough. If you cannot, you can go slip into it. And then people may, may be, a majority of the people, they are not learned. They are not too smart, majority of the people. So they think that you are a great, you are a great enlightened person because you are into retreat. You sit for a retreat and this, you, know, you think that you are meditating, you are so genuine. But you've always slipped into this comatose state. 
And then you, oh, you are unaware of that, and you spend whole years and years of this. And ordinary people, they think that you are doing so good, that you are an enlightened person. Because they don't know anything. They see that you are not drinking, that you are not roaming around, so that you always stay in the, the hermitage. So they use, uh, yes, you are doing your best. And ordinary people, they are, and then some of your students, and then of course naturally, all ordinary people, their, stu- their children will come to you as your students. And they will glorify you as a Buddha. And you think that you are Buddha. This is a problem. So therefore, the Sefani is the, I won't say this for these people, this self-deception, but it's very dangerous. So that, the, um, the, I would suggest that these are like, going to be like the legacies for us, for you, for me, from all the enlightened beings who practice this Mahamudra, that one day when we are ready, the, with the rich understanding of the empirical Buddhist psychology, including the basics, plus the sophisticated versions from the large, the, the corpus of the, the psychology text, but this text, and then say, with your best of your uh, motivation to, uh, to, you know, do the purifications, for example, like, say, say what are you going to read now? The purifications, economic merit, and so forth. And then finally, it should be your mind. We should, we are touching the mind, it may, mind in its bare form. This is what we're trying to do. So for that matter, <clears throat> the mind has many aspects, so many layers are there. There's so many layers are there. To what, what layer are you going to unfold that depends on so many elements. So, but this in mind, say the, um, say, beginning with refraining from 10 non-virtuous karmas. So when you don't refrain from these 10 non-virtuous karmas, our mind is so disturbed. With this kind of disturbance, like the very ferocious waves of the ocean, you can't expect to see the clarity of the water. And the, to see the clarity of the water, to really experience, to see the clarity of the water, even the, even the, the sediments, sediments, very tiny sediments, they should settle. And if the, it's just a ferocious wave, we can't imagine that the, the sediments, the tiny sediments, will settle. They will not settle. And in which case, the, the purity of the water will not manifest. The mother will not manifest. So for that matter, very ferocious wave, which is like the contaminant karmas, particularly the ten moon versus karma, they must be stopped to the best you can. This is so important. If you're not in that direction, thinking that the great earlier great saints, they were drinking, they are doing like this, they, you know, taking the fish like uh, just in Dilupa, only eating the, the taking the fish directly from the ocean and eating this. If you say that oh, this is what the great masters do, so why not we? If this is your attitude, we are then, you know, um, they say, it is like uh, the example given is the peacock is said to be able to feed on poisons, whereas the crow cannot feed on poison. A crow should not compare with the peacocks. Peacocks can digest the poison, and the, the, the poison can make the peacocks feather even more beautiful. But the crows, if they eat it, will die. So therefore, till we reach that level, which that is very different for us, catching our fish, it accumulates so much of negative karma because the fish is suffering. And your negative thoughts are increasing. Your, you see, the, and disregarding the life of others is increasing. But as for these enlightened beings like Jusun Tulupa, taking a fish there seems like so what we are doing. But in actuality, even the fish feels so ecstatic. Because of the, so it's all about the, the psychology and the energy. And the energy is transmitted from Jason Telupa, who's already so realized. And then the, uh, there are many anecdotes. So they, all the, you, he eats it, just munches it. And then instead of the feeling the pain for the fish, they feel ecstatic. And they are so fortunate. 
so because of this, these teachings, um, these practices, these teachings, which the very enlightened, highly enlightened beings perform, and the ordinary people can easily abuse these, saying that I'm also realized, you know, to just to get money from people, just to get fame from the people. Then they come in the, you know, with the pretension as like a great teacher. Because that, oh, this great teacher did it, just in Tilupa. So it's for this reason that just in Tilupa, these great teachers, while they perform these actions, they deliberately stay away from the human community. And so that the, say, the immature people cannot take advantage of these. Your spiritual, their spiritual realization we cannot see. But what they do superficially, we can see. And the ordinary people, they copy the superficial, you know, things, not the spiritual realizations. Okay, so with this in mind, the, um, let's turn to the text. <coughs> <coughs> A highway of the conquerors, meaning that they say the way, broad way to attain Buddhahood. The Mahamudra root text of the precious uh, Gendan oral uh, tradition by the first Benjamin Lama, Losan Shuri Gendan. And yes, this teacher is exceptionally, exceptionally great. And uh, oftentimes we do see that the uh, where the, uh, some scholars they write some comments, they, they have their own, um, the, the books written, scriptures written. And then meanwhile, when you see that they, some others' writings, they are not too clear or they are not too accurate, then they can be a little judgmental, they can be a little, you know, entirely opposing. But Benjamin Sanchuki, he never does it. His style is very different. It's extremely accommodating and extremely brilliant and vastly informed. Okay. Homage and pledge to compose. Namo Maha Mahamudraya. Homage to Mahamudra. All pervasive nature, everything. Okay. So here, <coughs> all pervasive nature, everything. Um, if you read the, the praise to Mahamudra by His Holiness the Foreign Dalai Lama, His Holiness the Foreign Dalai Lama made a composition on the uh, praise to all the, the great teachers of Nyingma, Sakya, Kaiku, then the, the Gelo, all the great uh, the traditions. And we pertain to the uh, Kaiku tradition. Okay, let me show this to you. Okay, do you see this on the um, dependent origination and emptiness? Do you see that on table contents? Page 208. Page 208. <clears throat> okay, so let's turn to page 213. In English, uh, okay, it's not. Okay, it doesn't matter. Uh, yes, I'll read for you. Um, I extracted two verses from His Holiness the Fourteen Dalai Lama's Pray for proliferating the Dharma of the Land of Snows. That is what's meaning Tibet. In Tibet, uh, the. Okay, page 213, it reads Venerable Marva Lodzawa. Shebe Doji. Shebe Doji is Chizumilaripa. And so on, the host of the precious Kaigyu, the sources of blessings, the chain of the unexcelled masters of this outstanding tradition. To you, I, to you all, I pray. May the Buddha Dhamma, the land of snows, place forevermore. Okay, now what is explained here is the Mahamudra. All phenomena encompassing samsara and nirvana are but the radiance of spontaneous awareness. So, okay. Um, the, at the moment, we cannot really be convinced, but the reality is that, uh, let's say, they, what we are seeing, what we are seeing, they're all just the, the radiance of your mind. For Okay, that, that, the, um, how many of you would agree with me that 
You see somebody so appealing. You see somebody so appealing, and the let's say the uh, okay, say something. This one particular food is so delicious. This is all related to your, with respect to your mind. To your mind, it's not necessary that what you like is liked by everybody else. Is your liking? So the you see it's so delicious, so nice. It's actually your mind projecting it. How many agree with mirror hands? Yes, this is so important. Then also, also the the um, we should observe that sometimes the same object, same object, partly <clears throat> under the sun and partly under shadow, the shade. Under the shade and partly under the sun, you will see that same object. The color is very different, right? It's not that the object has two different colors. Again, so what you see as this color or that color, even what you see as the color, the shade, these are all nothing but the play of your own mind. So you extend this, you gradually you will come to deduce. You will come to get a feeling that everything is the radiance of one's mind. It's just what your mind reflects. At the time of the Buddha, there was one particular person who was, you know, the, the going to commit suicide to jump into the river. And the Buddha stopped him. And the Buddha, what are you doing? And this man said, I don't see anything good in this world. Look at everything so gloomy. And the Buddha said, no, Buddha gave some teachings, and his mind changed. And he started to, and the Buddha said, did you notice these beautiful forests? Did you notice this beautiful the landscape? He looked around and said, you're right, I did not notice these things. So your mind is very down, gloomy, you see the world is gloomy. When a mind is extremely happy, everything is nice, everything is beautiful. So from the, these are these are the, the clues to take us deeper and deeper and deeper to know what is set here as the homage to Mahamudra, the all pervasive nature of everything. That is your mind. Is your mind is your mind which manifests the radiance which manifests in the form of the different colors, different shapes, the solid shape, is round, say the square, and the leaves, fresh, dry, all these things, nothing but they are the play of your own mind. And if you, this, is, this is one of the key things, this is so important. Okay. Then his illness reads, all phenomena encompassing samsara and nirvana are but the radiance of spontaneous awareness. All what you see as nirvana, all you, what you see as samsara, oh, there's this thing happening, that thing happening, I'm so I'm, I'm getting sick, all these things, they're nothing, but you see them as so object real dear. It's not about emptiness. It's not emptiness. Emptiness here to come. So look, this is where... Uh, this uh, the, the 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 Buddha's teachings is so precious. Still, it's not talking about the emptiness. So whatever is we see around there, just the radiance of your own mind. For example, say nowadays some people make their some lights, their table lights, table lights, and uh, the table lights designed in such a way that there are small <laughs> stars made there. The many small stars made there. In the night you switch it on and then the whole thing will be the, the stars you see everywhere. This will not be there. This is all coming from this small thing. So from our mind everything manifests. Not like you know your mind which is intangible becomes a solid flower. Not like this. Flowers nothing but the color and the shape that you see. What you see is nothing simply because it's how your mind manifests. How your mind manifests. So this is still it's not about emptiness. It's not about emptiness. Don't mix that up. So this is the meaning of how everything radiance of one's own mind. Everything, samsara, nirvana, everything is but nothing but the play of your mind. Your mind manifests one form you see as samsara. When it is more disciplined, you see as nirvana. 
So, besides your mind, there's nothing really there. This all manifestation of, but conventionally, we call it conventionally, meaning that so the, if you don't see this reality, then we say, okay, this is the house, we go there, we come in, and this is what I have to eat to survive. This is all convention. But if you go deeper, you will realize that whatever is just all coming from the, the radiance of your mind. This word radiance, this is key, the radiance of mind. Okay. So it says, all phenomena encompassing samsara and nirvana are but the radiance of the spontaneous awareness, the true nature of your mind. What is really there is the very pure nature of your mind. And that, for whatever reasons, like negative karmas, afflictions, so forth, they disturb it, and then, like, you know, say, say um, the ocean, extremely pleasant ocean, because of the, the waves, very strong waves, winds, uh, sorry, because very strong winds, then the ferocious waves can be created on this. These waves are not different from the ocean. They all come from the ocean. They all come from the ocean. Likewise, we say samsara, terrible, this thing, that and so forth. This is all nothing but the radiance of one's own mind. Then, so what is nirvana? When a mind is so disciplined not to be affected by the contaminant karmas and afflictions, then the mind assumes its own real nature, true nature. Then all these ferocious waves subside. You feel the peace, absolute peace, this nirvana. So, even the nirvana is also the play of your mind. Samsara is a play of your mind. It's raised in one's mind. All phenomena encompassing samsara and nirvana are but radiance of the spontaneous awareness, spontaneous awareness, innate awareness, spontaneous, innate, meaning that what is really there right from the beginning, what is really there as a material, for example, let's say uh, the, okay, French, you don't have, you did not have the potatoes in the beginning, right? Potato came from some other place, right? Now you become so good at making fried, uh, French fries, <laughs> right? All different things are made, and worldwide, everybody says French fries. Okay, so what I'm saying is that the same potato you prefer. Okay, in some places you see there are so many varieties. Of, what are they all potatoes? Some from the boiled potatoes, French fries, then the mashed potatoes, and some what? Fried potatoes, there are various kinds, they're all potatoes. So likewise, we all we see these things, all the varieties, good, bad, male, female, both, innate, non-innate, and the darkness, light, all these other things are nothing, but the material is your spontaneous innate awareness, your own mind. That is the material. That manifests in form of all these forms. Okay, now when is are the radiance of the spontaneous awareness, the awareness itself. Now what about this awareness? Okay, now the awareness is left. So till that point, this is not emptiness. It's just on the conventional level, see still there's a conventional truth that everything is the radiance of one's own mind. That's conventional truth. Now going to the ultimate truth. Even this, what you, what you finally see that, okay, funny is the potato. Funny is the radiance of one's own mind, one's own innate awareness. This innate awareness, we see this innate awareness, if you subject this to ultimate analysis, even the innate awareness is also like mental creation. Even that is not objectively there. Even that is just illusion. So the awareness itself, devoid of elaborations, even that is illusory. Even that doesn't exist as truly real. It's realized. So that, the two things happening here, the first one is the, the all samsara and nirvana, they are by the radiance of one's own mind. Then you see the samsara and nirvana, then you see very things there, they all dissolve into your mentally. You feel that they are nothing but the play of one, all one's own mind. Okay, so they all dissolve to this mind, number one. So that is still on the level of conventional truth. And so now, whatever we see, the books, the floor, the, the good weather, bad weather, all these things, they are now withdrawn in the experience of your own innate awareness. 
So that is compassion should. And this innate awareness, innate awareness that the end, if you're able to activate this innate awareness where it assumes the innate meaning, not being tempered, not being affected by the, the other factors, other factors. That is, for example, say a child, a child who is extremely calm, gentle, right? Okay, when will you know the child's the innate nature? Innate nature. Say, uh, the um, you say you provoke the child, and the child becomes so upset, so angry, unhappy. Is that the innate nature of the child? No. And then you create fear from here, fear from there. The child will rush here and there. As well, like a very restless child. Is that the innate nature? No. When do you know that the child's innate nature? Let him or her by himself or by herself. Don't provoke the child. Don't provoke the child. Then if the child is very peaceful, calm, going to the temple, making frustration, staying by himself or herself, very calm. That's the true nature of the child, right? But some of the child can be like a monkey. Monkey, even if you don't provoke, the monkey will be totally restless. Our mind is not like the monkey, the true nature of mind. That is extremely beautiful, calm, so pure, like all the waves of sight. Then the bubbles subside, then the, the, the sediments subside. It becomes so calm, blessed, and the purity dawns from inside. That's the true nature of the water. So likewise our mind. If this is what happens to our mind, if you're able to let this mind manifest its true nature, it's extremely clear, pure. It's so beautiful. So this, the, 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 the nature of the mind, the true nature, not affected by any external factors, that true nature is known as the subject of clear light. Now what we do is that, this, so this is the same. Many people, and they take you to this level. They take you to this level where you manifest this, the subject of clear light. An amazing experience where you can see that the duality dissolves. But even the duality, it has many layers. Where the, the things are there, my mind is here. The mind versus objects of the mind. Mind versus objects of the mind. All these objects are seen as radiance of one's mind. That duality, with respect to the objects to be radiance of your mind, all this duality dissolves. But still, there's subtle duality left there. And many the people, and some of the teachers also, they think that, they teach the student that this is the ultimate Mahamudra. This is a half a story. It's not a full story. Yet, to reach to that level is so difficult. It's not that easy. It requires a lot of merit to reach to that level. And yet, I'm the even in the past, the Tibetan masters, they said that this, you just stay in this experience and the ultimate will dawn naturally. And you do see uh, the, the, even the great writings of the great masters um, indicating these. But what they're talking and uh, what many people think, these two words wise, these two are the same, but meaning wise very different. So it's a half history that you're able to activate this, the clear light mind, the true nature of the mind, conventional true nature of the mind manifests. So pure, so clean, like vast ocean, very confident. So this is the subject of clear light. The next one is, is when it says, awareness itself devoid of elaboration. Now, this subject of clear light mind should meet with the object of clear light. Subject of clear light and the object of clear light should meet. What do you mean by the subject of clear light meeting with the object of clear light? The subject of clear light is also empty of objective reality. So the subject of clear light must be used as an agent to see the emptiness of the subject of clear light. 
emptiness of the subjective clear light is the objective clear light. Emptiness of the subjective clear light is the objective clear light. And this subjective clear light must be used, not just any other mind. But this subjective clear light must be used to see the emptiness of itself. When that is done, then the union of the subjective clear light and the, the objective clear light happens. So that becomes the the most powerful remedy to overcome all the mental defilements. That then truly let your Mahamudra manifest gradually. Gade gade para gade para sam gade bodhisattva. Okay, let me repeat it. This is very important. The first you activate this, the, you see that the it's still on the conventional truth level, level of conventional truth, where all the, these samsara and nirvana, whatever you see, all the things, they are nothing but the radiance of one's mind. For example, a dream is nothing but the radiance of one's own mind. Your mind simply, let's say, the manifest in the form of the, the dream, dream flower, dream house, and so forth. Likewise, everything that you see around, samsara, nirvana, everything, they are nothing but the play of your mind, how your mind manifests. When the mind manifests under, under the dictate of contaminated karmas and afflictions, then they manifest the, what you see around, what you experience is samsara. Whereas when the, the mind, when the mind is not under the dictate of the, say, the contaminated karmas and afflictions, then what experiences is nirvana. It's nothing but simply experience of the mind, the radiance of the mind. This is number one. So from this, so the uh, same, in more like in a metaphorical form, we see as though like all oh, what is samsara and nirvana, they are nothing but the reasons of one's mind. They all dissolve in your. They don't dissolve, but from your experience, you see that they are nothing but simply coming from your mind. how your mind behaves. That is manifest like this. So what is left is just the mind is left. Just the mind is left, and in a way, this is very close to the Shita Matra philosophy. This is very close to Chitta Mother philosophy. But the Chitta Mother philosophy, this is not the Chitta Mother philosophy, it's very close. It's very close. Then the next is, so this from the, okay, so this is still on the conventional truth, the level of the conventional truth. Conventional truth. That, that everything is in the radiance of one's own mind, and the mind alone is left. That's still on the conventional truth level. Now, this true nature of the mind, which is not affected by any external factors, this true nature of the mind, the conventional true nature of the mind, when the mind manifests, assumes the true nature, innate nature, innate awareness, in the form of extremely clear, vivid, expansive, um, and the radiant, radiant nature. So this is known as the subject of clear light. Okay. So, activating this, and then of course we need to we need to build the inertia, we need to build the stability of that ex this experience. So for which we have to continuously abide in this experience. When you do feel this, a reason you have to abide in this experience to stabilize this experience. So that's it, subject of clear light. And what I said is that many people think that this is the Mahamudra. This is a complete Mahamudra. No, this is just halfway through. But <coughs> we are not to underestimate this. This level is so precious. Even to experience this much is so precious that to experience this much, this level of the Mahamudra, you see that many of you unnecessary fears, afflictions, contaminant karmas will subside. They help us greatly. That's number one. But um, we should be uh, say the we're not talking about just experiencing a wonderful the say the the state of mind. The whole purpose is to become Buddha. Buddha means to to what? Buddha means to remove all the mental defilements. <coughs> to remove the defilements, it is a cognitive thought process. It's a cognitive activity of the mind. And to see the things in its true form, that is to see the emptiness of the true, true reality. So, now that this moment that you've manifested, the subject clear light, it should meet with the objective clear light. This is point number two, that you should meet with the objective clear light. The next question, 
What does it mean by the subjective clear light meeting with objective clear light? What, it, what does it mean by that? It means, well, first of all, what is objective clear light? And then what does it mean, meant by meeting of the two clear lights? Objective clear light is the emptiness of the subjective clear light. Emptiness nature of the subjective clear light. That is the objective clear light. What about the emptiness of the flower? Emptiness of the house and so forth. Yes, they are also objective clear light. But objective clear light, but precisely what we are talking here in this context is the ultimate reality, emptiness of the subjective clear light. Not even the gross mind, subjective clear light. Okay, so once you identify the subjective clear light, objective clear light, next is the meeting. The union of the subjective clear light and objective clear light. So what the union means? Union means that this subjective clear light must be used as the agent to see the subjective clear light. What do you mean by seeing the, the using the objective subjective clear light as the agent to see the subject objective clear light? It means use the sub subjective clear light to cognize the emptiness of the subjective clear light itself. Use the subjective clear light, subjective clear light, to see the emptiness of the subjective clear light itself. That is the meaning of the union of the subjective clear light and objective clear light. Okay, so this union, we will meditate on this, activating subjective clear light, where, where the, the true nature of the mind dawns, not being affected by the, say, the conceptual thoughts, the gross conceptual thoughts, they all subside. And then this mind is seeing the emptiness of this own, one's own, uh, oneself. This mind, the subject clear light, is seeing the emptiness of the subject clear light itself. So with this, what happens is that the, um, the mental defilements, it is with our mind. And given that our mind has various levels, waking state, we have one mind, and then when we go to sleep, again the mind is subtler. When we go, when we into the state of the, the faint, again subtler. And then when we go, when we are dying, it's subtler. So the mind becomes, the, the, the mind has various levels. And each of these levels have the mental stains. Say for example, say the say this example, say the clothes, when you wash the clothes, the clothes, let's say it is dropped, and you, you wear the clothes for, let's say, like, say a few months, or let's say one year, it'll be very dirty. So does it have the subtle stains or the gross stains? Gross stains or subtle stains? You see, what we see is the gross sense, very gross. But you wash it, you put in the detergent, you wash it, the gross sense will be gone. Well, first you, okay, let's say, uh, dip in the, uh, the, uh, the, the detergent. You wash it, and the, the dirt all come out. And it becomes clean. You look at it, still there are very subtle stains are there. So subtle stains and gross bother them. Till the gross is gone, the subtle will not go away. Till the gross is gone, the subtle will not go away. Therefore, mind has various levels, gross, subtler, 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 subtler. Till you remove, till we remove the, the gross, of course, we have to remove the gross. And then you can see the subtle. In other words, when you remove the subtle, then the, which means automatically the gross one is gone. Right? So therefore, this is a unique thing about the Mahamudra and the Tantric practice, where you try to eliminate the stains of this subtle mind. Gross ones, as I've been always sharing with you that for example first we have to remove the say the very ferocious waves which is like the contaminant commas negative commas we have to remove them if you don't remove them forget about mahamudra impossible 
right? We can learn about it, but we cannot experience it. If you don't remove, if you don't put effort to remove the, say, the gross waves on the ocean, like the ten known versus commas. So, the point is that the so it removes the, the for example, let's say that the the light, the light. So this light, what what we have here, this light cannot burn the papers. But if this if this light is channelized. If this light is channelized, it can burn the paper. You agree with me? In, under the magnifying glass. Magnifying glass, what it does is that it channelizes, it concentrates all the light, and it becomes, it is made very subtle, and it burns. So likewise, as mind becomes subtler, it becomes more powerful. Number one. Number two, that this, the, the, unless the subtle mind is manifested, Unless you try to get rid of the, the stains or the, the subtle minds, you cannot become Buddha. Because even though the, the gross, the uh, mental stains on the gross level of mind, they are eradicated, but if you don't identify the subtle minds, how can you eradicate the, the stains of the subtle mind? So what is being done here is that you are employ, employing the subtlest of the mind, subject of clay light, to see the subtlest of the reality, object of clay light, of itself, of itself meaning status of the mind, so the stains from the status of the mind will be eradicated. So removing the subtleness of the stains, of the subtleness of the mind, which is clearly the mind, when that is removed, and that is known as a Buddha. So this is how the Tantric practices, the Mahamudra practice, Dzogchen practice, and the union of bliss and emptiness, what you find in the Sakya and the Giruk tradition. So all these traditions, Sakya, Kajunyi, Magiruk, they all have this, the, the, say, what's going to be taught here, that the, the real experience of this clear light, employing this subtle clear light to see the object of clear light of this subject of clear light, that is taught by all the four schools from Say with different approaches. Okay. So it says, is realized the nature of the Dham the awareness itself devoid of elaborations is realized in the nature of Dharmakaya. So the great teachers like just Nalupa, just Tilupa, just Marpa, just Mila, just Kambu, all these great teachers, they describe this Mahmud as the Dharmakaya. Because in their experience where the you see the you see the the emptiness of this subject clear of mind. When you see that, so the, it is on the ultimate level, we see that everything dissolves, including the subtleness of the mind, on the ultimate level. So that is the Dharmakaya, that is like the fabric, fabric like the space, to create space for the vapor, the cloud to be formed. So that cloud is like the, uh, the from the Dharmakaya, from the Dharmakaya, national Dharmakaya, Dharmakaya, then the wisdom Dharmakaya emerges. Where Buddha's mind emerges from this. Emerge doesn't mean it's costal. It's not costal. It's not costal. It's just simultaneous. So the, from this, uh, the wisdom Dharmakaya is manifested. From the wisdom Dharmakaya, then the rain, the rain from this cloud manifests. The rain is the rain of the, the Rubakaya, the form body, the Sambhukaya, and the Nirmanakaya, the rain, manifests. So this is how the, the Buddhas manifest. Buddha's three body, four bodies are manifested, five bodies are manifested from this Dharmakaya. So this experience of the Mahamudra, so we that we experience at a basic level, that is like the similitude of the Dharmakaya. And then you practice more, then it becomes purer, purer, purer. And it assumes the purest form, that is the real Dharmakaya. Okay. Pervading all existences of and appearances of samsara and nirvana is the great Mahamudra. May the Buddha Dhamma of the land of snows blaze forevermore. Okay. So this is from His Holiness's text. So now reading the, the root text, it says Namo Mahamudraya, homage to the Mahamudra, the all pervasive nature of everything. So what we say is that the um that Everything radiates one's own mind. Even this mind is of the nature of the ultimate reality, 
of the emptiness. In fact, this emptiness, what we call emptiness, that is fabric of all the phenomena. So the this emptiness of your own mind, of your own subject of clear light, that emptiness of the subject, that is the one which is the which pervades all phenomena. Because your mind pervades all phenomena. Your mind, everything is nature on your, your mind. Your mind pervades all phenomena that you see of samsara nirvana. And this mind also is the nature of emptiness. You know, the emptiness of this mind pervades all phenomena. Pervasive, all pervasive nature of everything. I bow with respect at the feet of the incompatible Guru, the Lord of Siddhas, who reaches the naked state of reality, naked state of reality, meaning that the emptiness of the subject of clear light, which is the, for example, let's say that we, we, we put on clothes, not to be naked. So all what we see as cows and these are all like the clothes, the clothes which hides the reality behind. What's that reality? Emptiness nature, inexpressible, the, the inexpressible, pervasive, described as in Tibetan, so she to do so do much do zero which you should cool in it. So that then you call me no be me managa no se never shall. This is what the Buddha taught when Indra and Brahma, the kings of the god and goddesses, they descend to, to make request to the Buddha to turn the will of Dharma. This is what the Buddha said that the um, the say what we said here is profound, peaceful, elaboration, create and clear light. <coughs> Um, profound, peaceful, the uh, the self she to tell. Profound, peaceful, and the elaboration free, non composite and clear light. Such is the, the uh, such is the the nectar of the reality or the Dharma that I've discovered. Finding no one who can fathom this teaching in silence, I'll return to the words. This is what the Buddha said to Indra Brahma. And the, what is the, the referring to is actually this Mahamudra, where the true nature of your mind in the form of the vast expanse of the emptiness, this is something which people cannot get easily. I don't see anybody who can see this. So therefore, better it is to stay by yourself in meditation in the wilderness. This is what the Buddha said. So referring to the Mahamudra. Okay. The Lord Siddhas who teaches the naked state of reality, this naked state of the reality. So what we see around this all the facades. What we see around this all the facades which blur the the true nature of the reality. Okay. Indivisible and inexpressible sphere of the version mind. Meaning that that this the the to be seen by this subject of clear light and this subject of clear light. They say on the conventional level, this subject of clear light, this is the ultimate. On the ultimate level, the emptiness of the subject of clear light, that's the ultimate. So this is the Mahamudra. Okay. Having condensed the essence of the ocean of Sutric and Tantric advice, I'll write down the instructions of the Gendan, the tradition of Mahamudra, of the Supreme Siddha. Dhamma Vajra and his followers who give sound instructions. Okay. <coughs> so this Mahamudra is understood on various levels. In other words, um, the for example say that some of you his holiness that let me give give teaching recently on Shri Kalish um Shri Charasamvara. And um, in this book, page two one four. Mm. Did you translate this part? Oh, okay, okay. So, in fact, this part is extremely important, which we compiled over the la over the seventy years. Jimbal so kindly uh, translated already into French, and will be given to you printed later on. So, page two one four. There is a mention of Shiri He. Page 214. Page 214. It says, Shiri Heduka. If you look at this, it's just the same. It's just the same. Oh, oh, if the, if this is Mahamudra actually. This is Mahamudra. So, I see that the He. Okay. 
Uh, so the, I'm not going to go too much into detail. Uh, later on, if you're interested, I'll be happy to uh, to help you uh, help you explain it more. Uh, but this again talking about how the mind is the, the, the causal factor for all the other phenomena. It says, Here is the substance of phenomena, the emptiness of the mind, which is the source of everything as it is imputed to be of causal nature. The mind is the causal nature of all phenomena. So what is this mind? The subject of clear light. This subject of clear light that manifests, that the radiance of this is manifest in the form of all the phenomena, samsara, nirvana. So that is a part of the Mahamudra. Now, even this, the Shri, the last one, Shri is a non-dual exalted wisdom that abides in congruence with the emptiness of the object. Say, what you see is the emptiness, and this mind which sees the emptiness, this mind should be non-dual with emptiness. You see, even this mind is also empty of true existence. Empty of truth. It doesn't mean that it's just empty, nothing there. No, this is not a connotation. So you realize, you realize that, that you cognize that even this mind, which is the subject of clear light, even that is also empty of true existence. So then you are left with the nothing to hold on to. The moment you have something to hold on to, that is the where you get trapped. You get trapped there. You see something, and that is a trap not to see all phenomena and then you get glued to it that is afflictive obstructions it perceives it appears as truly real that traps you into that traps you into the cognitive obstructions and then you are glued to this that uh, that is the afflictive obstructions that is samsara so this is how we are trapped so uh, to see the Mahamudra in its full form, let this clear light mind manifest and let this use this clear light mind to see the emptiness of this clear light mind. Then you will left will you'll be left with nothing to lash on to. And you purify the state of the mind. The more you meditate on this, the more it'll be purified. The more it'll be purified of the metal stains. So it is like let's say that the um for example let's say the, the dirty clothes you put in the, the decision just put for like second and one second and take it out okay but it will tell me that the, the cloth dirt of the cloth will they be removed by the detergent what's the answer no no, no? but they will not be the detergent useless just clean it. Huh? It didn't it's for cleaning the clothes right <laughs> okay, so the, the point is that it's for cleaning the clothes, yes. Okay, and then if it's, clean, if it's for cleaning the clothes, then you dip it in the uh, the detergent for one second and take it out. No, it involves a process, right? The more you dip there, it'll take time to gradually keep removing the dirt. The detergent will be the acting on the dirt to remove it gradually. It'll take time. There's a time factor there. This is time factor there. Likewise, the subject clear light mind to see the emptiness nature of the subject of clear light itself is like a detergent. The more you expose to this, the more it will be operating to remove the metal dirt. Pure and pure it becomes. So this is how we progress through gade, gade, para gade, para sam gade, bodiso. At one point, it will remove all the metal dirt. At that point, then the purest form of this subject of clear light manifests. That's the Buddha's mind. Okay. Okay. So this Mahamudra is the this word Mahamudra you find used in many contexts. And Mahamudra is explained in the form of the Sutra system and the Tantra system. Okay. So in sutra system, it's more to do with the in the sutra system it is more to do with the, the emptiness per se, emptiness, just emptiness, and in the tantra system, the subject mind or, or the clear light, subject clear light mind, the sorry for this moment, subject clear light mind seeing the emptiness of itself is also mantra, and the emptiness experience 
of the subjective clay light, seen by the subjective clay light, this is also the Mahamudra. So, from the point of the emptiness, ultimate reality of the subjective clay light, seen by the subjective clay light, there's the Dharmakaya. And from this, the mind which sees that, that is the wisdom Dharmakaya. And then that is the, the basic fabric manifests in the form of Sambhukhaya. And from Sambhukhaya, manifests to benefit all the ordinary beings. That's the Nirmanakaya. Okay, so what we do is that we will um, stop here reading the text. We'll do a quick, uh, the say the practice of the what we discussed yesterday. <coughs> Okay, so what we do is that um, okay, what we do is you sit upright okay um, okay, we, what we do is Put your hands on your knees and your arms straight. And uh, then the, that, okay, first your hands out and thumbs inside. Wrap the two thumbs with the other fingers upside down. Put straight on your knees and body upright. Good. Okay. Then, uh, Okay, just first look at me. So with the body upright, then you say the, the two fists through your legs, touching the legs, pull this like this, pull this like this, through your ribs up, almost like under your the armpit, and then throw it in front, not forcefully, gently. Don't do it forcefully. Otherwise, in a few days, two, three days time, you will be, have pain. It's quite painful. Okay. So with this then the, the, the two fists will go to the left side like this and then the right fist should hit the the left armpit below. Okay, let's do it again. Okay. Anna Sophie, you want to come here? Come here. Ah, uh -huh. oh, you go there? Okay. <clears throat> okay. And let's do it again. Body upright and the the making a fist on your knees, pull straight up. Good. Don't do it too forcefully. And then to your left side with the right fist under your left armpit. Okay, then release the the, the first finger. First finger meaning the the forefinger. And the back of the forefinger block the right nostril. Right nostril? Okay. Take three deep breaths. And then put your hand on your left knee. Then breathe out through your nose. Through your left nose. Again, bring up. Again. Okay, same. Pull. Now towards the right side. The, the, the turn towards the right with your the left fist like this and let go of the release the forefinger. Block the left nostril and take three deep breaths. Okay, again, pull, throw, and now put on your both your knees down and breathe through both nostrils. <laughs> oh. 
Okay, good. This prepares us into this meditation. Okay, now with your normal meditative posture. Okay, just follow the instructions. Don't close your eyes. Keep your eyes half open for the fire is cast down. Okay. Just empty your mind, meaning don't let any thoughts come in. If thoughts come, don't follow them, don't chase them, don't block them. If thoughts come, you just keep observing your mind. You be the agent, don't be the, don't be the object, be the agent. Just keep observing it, observing your mind. With thoughts or without thoughts, without thoughts means empty. It's like a vacuum. Okay, but let's just visualize a blue, scum, a blue flower. It's just an example given. You can imagine anything. You can visualize anything. Okay, let's say in this case, let's say blue flower in front of you. This mind, which you are trying to be aware of, the awareness of awareness, this mind which you are trying to be aware of is the nature of the clear knowing. Clear. The first part clear has two connotations. One is that it is clear in terms of the no, no obstacle, no the obscurations in the form of dirt, what blocks it, or in the form of luminosity. Given that this image is formed so well in your mind, the blue flower is not a real blue flower, it's the image of the blue flower. To form the image, the surface on which the image is formed must be very clear, like the mirror. If the surface of the mirror is dusty, no image can be formed. If the surface of the water is dusty with leaves and so forth, no image of the moon can be formed. The fact that image of the moon is formed, the fact that your face, the image of the face occurs on the, the mirror is a clear indication that the surface, of, the surface of the water body and the surface of the mirror is clean. So exactly in the case of my mind, the, where the image of the flower, blue flower, appear, appeared, it's the surface of the mind. The surface of the mind must be very clear. In other words, the mind should be very clear. Yes, I agree. And not only that, it is luminous in nature that you see this image of the flower in dark. It will, although the flower is next to you, you don't see it because there's no luminosity there. The fact that you see a flower outside next to you is an indication that there's a luminosity, there's light there. And in the case of the image of the flower in your mind, um, there should be light, otherwise I cannot see the image of the flower. There should be light. But this light is not external light, it's mental light. It's the luminosity, mental luminosity. Luminosity of the mind, the luminous nature of the mind. Yes. Okay, that makes sense. Now, unlike the mirror, the mirror, although the reflection is formed with the light and with the clarity of the surface, but it does not have the capacity to know that the image is formed. Whereas, in the case of my mind, not only that the the the, the mind is clear knowing, the clear and uh, the luminous, the mind also knows that the image is formed. Okay, this is mind, which is not non-physical, which is not of a color, which is not a shape, which is not physical, which is not made of atoms, but it exists as a pure experience with a clear and knowing quality. Okay, you are aware of this? Good. Next. Are you thinking of the flower? Yes. Who is thinking? What is the agent who thinks of the flower? I. What is that object? 
Yes, I'm thinking of the flower. The flower is the object. Now move next. Do you know that you are thinking of the flower? Yes. Here, who is the, who is the subject? I. I know that. You know what? What is your object? That I am thinking of the flower. Again, I. The one who thinks. I, that who thinks. Thinks of the flower. That is the object. So here, object, subject, both is the same. The self, being aware of the self. Be very clear. Yes, I'm so I'm aware of the self. At times, when you go into like a to state. Ask this question, I'm aware that I'm thinking? Yes, I'm aware. The moment you say that I'm aware of myself, that it, you you save yourself from falling into lethargy or the common to state, blankness of the mind. Good. Now move from the self to the mind. When I say I know that I'm thinking of the flower, it is actually my mind which knows that my mind is thinking of the flower. So what is the subject here? My mind. What's the object here? My mind which thinks of the flower. So what's the difference? It's just the same. My mind is the subject. My mind is the object. So my mind is aware of my own mind. This is known as the awareness of the awareness. Awareness, which is aware of one's own awareness. The three layers stacked there. Awareness as the subject, awareness as the object, and the act of awareness. Awareness, which is aware of the awareness. We can stay in this experience. Now this object, awareness, your mind is the object. This mind. Let's go back to this. That you should be your mind should be aware of your awareness in the form of clear knowing with the image of the blue flower. Okay, the blue flower is just the image. It's not your mind. It's the nature of the mind. Okay, just just mentally see where this image is formed. Where this image is formed, what is that surface like? That is that surface is none other than your own awareness, than your own mind. Just see with this awareness of the awareness of this uh, the blue flower. Now try to shift it to the awareness of the awareness, which is aware of the screen on which this. Blue, uh, blue flower appears. That screen is none other than your own awareness. In other words, you are trying to explore what this mind is like. Just what to stay in this experience. What is the screen like on which the reflection of the image of the flower appears? you come out of the meditation I will stop here <laughs> Om Gate Gate Bara Gate Bara Sam Gate Bodhi Swatyata Om Gate Gate Bara Gate Parasam gate bodhi swaha.